Hello my dudes, it's another and today we'll tell you how to data mosh. This is my first tutorial so if I do anything wrong please tell me. I will first explain what data moshing is and then I will show two methods. I will first explain how to fake it with effects in Sony Vegas or After Effects and then I will explain how to do real data moshing. This here is a great example of how cool data moshing can look like. It's basically those pixel transitions. To understand how data moshing works, you also have to understand how videos are compressed. As most of you should know, a video consists of 24 pictures each second. Some more, some less, but 24 is pretty standard. But apart from those normal frames, there's also the so-called iframes. Unlike normal frames, an iframe is about um, how the picture changes between frames. Basically, iframes are catching the movement of different objects and motion track them. And like this, videos can get compressed better and aren't too big. Without iframes, a 1 minute Full HD video would be as big as 60 times 24 Full HD pictures or wallpapers. And in reality, a Full HD video is way, way smaller. Now, a problem we can get is that there aren't infinite iframes. It depends on the bitrate. And if there isn't enough space for all iframes because of too much movement or weird movement, um, the quality has to decrease so everything can still be tracked. But as soon as the movement stops and there isn't that much to track anymore, the quality can increase a lot as you can see in this video here. If you want to know more about this topic, check out Tom Scott and his video which I show here. He did quite a good job at explaining how this kind of compression works. So, if you data mosh, you basically delete all the iframes and because of that any movement can't be tracked anymore and will look super glitchy, especially if you have two different clips. They will kind of fade in together but in a really fucked up way. Sadly, the effect can't be controlled, so it can look bad or good. But now let's start with the tutorial. I will explain how to fake it now. You can use either Sony Vegas or After Effects. It's pretty simple effects and both programs can do it. This here has been done in Sony Vegas and it looks pretty good in my opinion. So here we are in Sony Vegas. The first thing you do is you make six layers. Um, I already did it. And then you import two clips. Now you have to make a subclip. Um, you cut off the last frame of the first clip. Then right click, make a subclip and then drag it. The length of the subclip will be uh, the length of your transition. Then you put the second clip above the subclip and cut it where the subclip ends. Now you gotta duplicate that clip and put it above or underneath the other one and then you have to cut the one on the top like this. Next thing to do is um, to motion track the movement of this clip. In Sony Vegas you have to do it per hand, in After Effects you just use a null object. Um, you create a red solid, put it on top, cut it, open it, and then you have to cut out a little circle or something, it actually doesn't matter. And then you put it on what you want to motion track. I will motion track the head, or the, the mouth, because that's the main movement. And yeah, you put it on it in the first frame and then you go to pan cropping and then you just track it. You don't have to track it frame by frame. It doesn't have to be super proper, so yeah. You see how I do it and that's more than enough. In the end you have to check if the tracking is more or less okay and then you copy the keyframes. Then open up the subclip and just paste them. And then you have to duplicate the subclip and put it underneath the first one. In the next step we have to create a displacement map for those two subclips. You first mute those clips above and then go to your comp modes and go to custom and create the displacement map. You change those values, everything to zero and then you go to the start of the clip and make a new keyframe. And then you go to the end and yeah, set a value for the displacement. It should be pretty low. 
kinda like this. It depends on your taste, but don't make it too high. And yeah, then it's nicely animated, as you can see here. In After Effects, you just use a displacement effect or something. Now we go to the clips on top again and mute the one above and then go to effects and go to chroma key and after effects you just use the color key you have to select a main color for example here the orange of the woman's suit and then you key it you then keyframe the second value and in the end it has to be set to the lowest and in the beginning it has to be set to the highest like this you have a nice transition so in the beginning everything is keyed out and in the end it's not. Then you mute, mute that clip and unmute the other one and just key out the color black. In very bright clips you can key out white but usually you have to key out black. And you do the same again and animate it like the same. And that is pretty much it. Now you have yeah, yeah, now you have a nice data moshing fake. What you also can do is you let the clips fade in a bit so the transition is better. As you can see here, especially um, when it changes to the clip above, the transition isn't that nice so you just let it fade in. And that is it. In this example it worked pretty well. It obviously depends on the clip and on how your values are and all that stuff. Now to real data moshing, this is how it will look like. You first need your clip, which should be type AVI. And then you also need a special program, which is called AVDemux. And you need version 2.5.6. Other versions don't work. Then you open it up, drag your clip in and, and change the value here from copy to exit. Go to configure, go to frames. And then you type in a really high value here, just many nines. Then you save the video. Uh, just type in any name and then it will render. This will take a while. Now when you have your rendered video you just put it to your desktop. It's just a normal data, you can't open it. But you can drag it in and then you can delete your iframes. As you can see here the very first one is always an iframe and you don't delete that one. The other ones should be B or P frames. Um, so you have to find the next iframe and you do this by clicking that button. It always jumps to the next iframe. And then you can delete it. You first have to select it. By clicking A you select it from the left. Then you go one frame and select it from the end. And yeah, then you have that special frame selected and can just delete it by pressing delete on your keyboard. And this video here doesn't have any more iframes, so we're done. But usually you have to you have to delete every iframe to make it work. So some videos have more. Yeah, and then you just save it again and press enter. And this time it should render way faster. One more thing, um you can't open what you have rendered, so you have to right click, go to properties and type dot avi behind it so you can open it you then go to ok and can open it with your favorite player and here you have a data motion video so this is all the basics you have to know thanks for watching this tutorial as i said in the beginning please uh, give me some criticism so i can improve on the next one and if you want you can also tell me any topics if you have any questions regarding video editing